a very good morning everybody uh am i audible and visible both right yeah uh 8th march is celebrated at international women's day so to celebrate that um festival of womanhood today we are having a cme on breast cancer screening techniques this is a very new and innovative thing which will be later detailed by dr geeta manjunath and also dr ram prakash sir to help out with all the queries and more detailing into the subject he will be chairing the uh, session i welcome this is a uh, program is being held in association with so gog and we have the president dr minakshi ben patel to give the opening remarks and bless us with the president's speech we all know dr minakshi patel she is the director of sunshine global hospital at present president of sogok past president of baroda obstetric gynae society and her special interest of area is endoscopic surgeries dr minakshi patel thank you pallavi for your kind words i welcome everybody on behalf of sogok as a president it gives me immense pleasure to welcome dr pallavi president baroda society dr deepesh secretary of sogo dr amita secretary of baroda society dr geeta manjunath founder and ceo of the niramaya dr ram prakash he is a senior radiologist first to start the thermography in india president and secretaries of all the societies and members of sogo juniors seniors and respected teachers we all are passing through a difficult time of covid pandemic so we have changed our uh, learning sessions on the digital platform now today uh, in international women's day breast cancer is the second most common cancer of the female it is the most prevalent form of the cancer and this disease nowadays has become a major problem in the world due to westernization of the culture and lifestyle the so increasing number of the cases four times higher in a, one in 29 women diagnosed with a breast cancer and in india and everywhere in the world october is the month of breast cancer awareness month if this cancer is detected not detected early can lead to life threatening condition if diagnosed timely 98% survival rate is there now And if you go for the WHO data in 2019, 2.09 million cases were there diagnosed, and 6 lakhs 27 deaths globally occurred. 14 percent of the female cancer occurs at any age in India. It starts from early 30s to 50 to 64 years of the age. In India, the study shows that 50 to 1 percent of the women suffering from the cancer in Mumbai. their age group is 40 to 49 years rate is higher in metropolitan cities and if you consider the risk factors like family history strongly positive mother and sister they have a higher chances of the breast cancer those who have a benign breast lump they are also have a chance dense breast tissue unhealthy diet unhealthy lifestyle obesity childhood chemotherapy taken for a long time long term hormonal therapy breca 1 and breca 2 genetic mutation all these are the higher risk group patients another thing in a very short signs symptoms like small lump in the breast discharge discoloration of the skin tissue over the breast ulcerations change in the size shape of the breast redness and pain this can be one of probably the signs symptoms for all these things prevention is better than the cure so prevention for multidisciplinary approach for the breast cancer awareness program screening program for the early detection in the early detection screening program self examination clinical examination mammography and today dr manjunath and dr ram prakash will tell us other modalities for the early detection of the breast cancer in the early detection the and encourage always breastfeeding to the female awareness of the self examination of breast within first 5 to 7 days after the periods at the age of 20 or more than 20 if required clinical examination is necessary mammography regular healthy diet 
exercise for 45 to 60 minutes avoid unhealthy food and oily food dietary change in the dietary habits maintain the weight will decrease the breast cancer by 40% and avoid bursting the myths like breast cancer is a contagious lump in the breast means cancer carcinoma and mammogram can cause the spread of the cancer this myth should be broken to and giving awareness to the public is most important on our part of the study so now i will request pallavi to give introduction for dr geeta manjunath and she will take the floor thank, thank you, you dr thank you minakshi ben for introducing us to the topic uh, i will like to introduce both our uh, faculties dr geeta manjunath and also dr uh, ram prakash uh, in detail and then dr ram can share the session uh, so dr geeta manjunath is founder ceo and cto of niramai this is her brain child she has over 25 years of experience in it research and has led many innovative projects in healthcare and transportation especially catering to emerging markets until the end of 2016 she was lab director heading the data analytics research in xerox india prior to that she was a principal research scientist at hewlett packard laboratories for about 17 years and also a member of the cdac team which mm -hmm. built the yeah, first commercial awesome. supercomputer from india i think all the people who are techno savvy and um, uh, very much into um, softwares and gadgets and they would understand the immense depth and the work this lady has done till now she also holds a phd in computer science from indian institute of science management education from kellogg school of management chicago she has uh, she was also the winner of 2010 mit tech review grand challenges for technologies in healthcare categories she has also co-authored the book on cloud technologies called as moving to the cloud which was published by elsewhere synergesis publications she is a senior member of ieee and current chair of i computer science society bangalore she is the inventor of 14 us patents with more pending grants she was recently awarded the bayrak winner award in 2018 and the one sentence which i would like to specifically read about is she is also on the forbes list of self made women for 2020 what a um, what a way to go for this lady uh, we were very much eager to hear about how you are going to help the artificial intelligence it's always uh, the imaging sciences and how does this science and artificial intelligence would help the doctors and surgeons achieve the best for their patients was always uh, very challenging and is still challenging um, so welcome dr geeta uh, thank you yeah and i will just uh, also introduce our chair for today dr ram prakash um uh, he he was a senior residency is done in 1975 then in post graduation years were 1976 79 he's at present based in bangalore and areas of special interest research in digital thermal imaging that is thermography we'll discuss how it's going to differ from mammography then general radiology ultrasound and imaging and he was amongst the innovative uh, amongst the first pioneers uh, gaining knowledge for the transrectal intracavitary and high frequency ultrasound and uh, he's also uh, enjoying teaching in radiology welcome dr ram prakash sir thank you yeah i would uh, request dr manjunath to take the floor and start thank you very much dr uh, palemi ma'am for your kind introduction and detailed uh, uh, you know uh, read up of the resume as well and i am also uh, very thankful for dr ramprakash sir uh, for chairing the session and agreeing to come on a sunday 
for doing so and also dr minakshi patel for giving such a wonderful welcome speech about and also the different symptoms and so on are uh, going into the details which is so very very important ma'am both dr pallavi ma'am and dr minakshi ma'am the kind of uh, activities you are doing in sogog and uh, box is really really commendable because we really have to reach many many women and create that awareness about uh, how to take care of their breast health and again we thank uh, uh you know with full heart from niramai um uh, for giving us an opportunity to share uh, some of the work that we have done in the last four years um uh yes the the topic of today's talk would be uh, to talk about this new breast imaging solution which uh, we have developed uh, at niramai in collaboration with our partners and mentors such as dr amprakash sir as well uh, where we are bringing uh, combination of thermal imaging and ai and trying to sort of see how this can save many many lives a bit about nirama itself uh, you know just uh, because many many people here would may not be aware of what this is this is a new name uh, yes uh, we, we um sort of when i was in my previous organization you know working with dr amprakash sir and other doctors for uh, innovating for the emerging world um you know there were several instances where you know it made me feel that this is something that we have to take it on the ground and uh, really make it uh, uh, possible for women to go and have the test and make the accuracy to such a level that even doctors such as all of you will be able to accept this as a good solution and we'll talk a lot more about what solution we're talking about but niramai is a startup which was born purely because of this passion of making technology work for breast cancer and uh, niramai in sanskrit means being healthy sarve santu niramaya let everyone be healthy that's our motto and uh, it also has an expansion non invasive risk assessment through machine artificial intelligence so the main goal of uh, the team is to use ai and technologies such as uh, you know this novel technologies like ai in computer science because most of us are computer scientists here and engineers and software developers so we want to use technology and ai to non invasively detect health risks right in a very very seamless simple fashion so it is scalable and affordable and accessible and really make high quality healthcare possible for everyone everyone whether she is in a rural area or urban area and all of these places whichever country and so on and so forth so uh, the first problem uh, you know that we are attempting to solve is breast cancer a rough uh, view of the outline of the talk here so first i'll give an introduction uh, not to necessarily to breast cancer i think all of you are experts in knowing uh, what is needed and the risks and so on but i'll give an introduction to the new technique and, and the reason why this new technique is needed and also the gaps in the current solutions which makes a new technique definitely required right even after 30 40 years of established techniques such as mammography sonography mri and so on then i give a more birds eye view of the new technique we call thermalytics um you know more from outside in perspective user uh, feel and so on then we'll go into like you know peeling of the onion we go into the details of exactly what is the technical detail of what is this technique how is it going to work you know because all of you are you know um, very very expert doctors and you may want to know you know just because somebody says you know it works why should i believe tell me what is inside why should it work next we'll say have you tested with other standard of care have you compared with mammography have you compared with ultrasound that's a question we get asked most of the time especially in the clinical setting and clinical forum such as this so we will talk a little bit more detail about the clinical studies we have done and the results finally you know nothing uh, is possible without seeing actual examples of how this looks versus mammography and does it really give the answer so we will go through a bunch of case studies or just example images and finally to make it really feasible for end user to use it has to have a regulatory stack right so so what are the kind of regulatory clearances we have done and got so on so forth and, and then uh, we conclude with some of the you know recognitions and and other things that we have received at niramai for this particular solution first a bit of the context you know which most of us are aware are definitely um you know but but it's a Six hundred and eighty-four thousand women all over in all over the globe, you know, that are uh, uh, dying because of this disease. Now, 
that as all of you know that it is one of the kind of simplest curable cancers among all cancers if i may say because you know it's a soft tissue cancer right and also um, early detection is very very critical and there are statistics which says that if a person is detected in stage 0 or stage 1 there can be 90% 90% survival rate however if a person is detected in stage 3 or stage 4 five or five year survival can be less than 5% you know that is the sort of the flipping of the negative and the positive is what is possible i'm talking about more than five year survival which is uh, which is which is what makes it very very important to have early detection like dr minakshi patel mentioned you know early detection definitely is important and prevention is definitely better than cure and yeah niramai we say prevention is better than cure prevention is easier than cure and prevention is less costly than cure so so because of that reason we have to try and prevent if not fully prevent at least do a early diagnosis and early detection so it's almost like prevention in india it's a huge huge challenge because the survival rate is just about 50% every alternate lady detected with breast cancer is dying and many many of these is because of late detection and so the key thing that we want to go on and on is about early detection now the next question is why is early detection not happening why are we losing so many women to this disease the current tests and we will go a little bit more about what those current tests are and many of you are already aware of this the current tests such as mammography or an mri or an ultrasound is not affordable for general screening like of the population when there is no symptom when there is uh, you know uh, no major uh, symptom or an abnormality but we want to do it like a screening everybody so if that is where we can do a uh, detection so a mammography uh, at least in bangalore costs about 3500 to 4000 rupees and it's not affordable for you know many many people even in urban cities you know urban ladies they say why do i have to spend that money to actually do it when i have no symptoms right so that is is a challenge and because the machine itself uh, can be anywhere around 80 lakh rupees of course you can look at analog refurbished which are much much lower many many small diagnostic centers are not able to afford the machine itself and so the accessibility gets a hit and if you have a mammography man that will be a two and a half crore and of course somebody needs to sponsor it to actually take it to villages and so on so the whole thing is an accessibility and affordability issue which is similar for a many many other diseases breast cancer is just one of them you know to make a, 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 you know what we call as high quality healthcare available for everybody right that is a challenge the other one is basically all of you are aware that mammography is an x-ray based test and which is which is okay because it is one only only test which is proven to reduce uh, mortality right with, with millions of people who have gone through it however because it is x-ray based you know the guidance is that the test can be done only once in 2 years and there are also studies which says that if a person goes through more than 6 screenings uh, of mammography annually or biannually also you know her risk to cancer can actually double depending upon which uh, you know um, bracket of risk uh, she is in so the guideline is once in 2 years unless she is actually high risk and or is a high risk bracket age where it can be annual so what happens if the person gets cancer between the two um you know mammograms the interval cancers are also very very important and more so as we all know mammography is recommended only about 45 years of age and in india per se the number of women who are uh, seen with breast cancer incidences and symptoms under 45 is many many more it's also because uh, uh, india is a, a youth heavy population right so so the average age for breast cancer incidences in women in india is 10 years lower than what it is for countries like us or other countries right because it's much much younger it's about 52 years is the average age that means half of the people who are getting are under 50 years which means there needs to be a test which works for women under 45 years of age and finally not but not the least right is also when we talk about women under 45 or even above 45 women with dense breast you know we have an issue with the sensitivity of mammography and we will talk a lot more about this part given that it's a clinical audience but all in all what happens the statistics says that out of 2 billion women who are about 25 years of age and have seen like you know we have seen incidences even about 25 only 10% of them are actually going through regular screening a preventative screening 
90 percent of the this is even global number in india this is 98 percent are not going for preventative screening we are not saying don't go to mammogram please go but there are so many other reasons why people are not taking it so please come and, and we need another test and if there is one test which can address even one of these issues then we will have more number of people if it is affordable more number can afford if it is accessible more number can go and similar the other issues if we can handle you know more number of people are uh, going and just a small bit about you know the experience of mammogram is something that not every lady loves you know that's also another one which is a side point here now a little bit more about the breast density issue right you know again because it's the clin clinical audience so acr american college of radiology has come up with these four uh, classifications of uh, breast density starting from a b c d a is the fatty breast and d is the highly dense breast right so in between is b is uh, slightly fat uh, you know maybe like slightly dense and c is heterogeneously dense and of course d is highly dense now when we have fatty breast you know it is actually easy to use a mammogram and we have the expert dr ramprakash sir here who can actually validate this it's easy to find these small micro calcifications or uh, you know abnormal lumps which can be malignant just because there is a lump as uh, dr minakshi patel said it is not cancer yes 60% of the lumps are benign right so so even then you know a radiologist can actually zoom in and then figure out in possibly composition a and composition b but when we come to composition c and composition d it becomes very hard to find abnormalities because abnormalities mostly tend to be lumpy and that gets mixed up the dense breast just to see an example here you have two breasts was first one is a 60 year old and second is a 40 year old and obviously this is a dense breast and a small lesion here probably will be uh, you know detected by a, a radiologist a, even a young radiologist or not very experienced radiologist because this is standing out in a fatty breast but in a dense breast where the whole breast tissue is dense because of fibroglandular uh, nature of the breast itself having even a bigger lesion is getting unnoticed because there's a confusion you know it looks like the rest of the tissue so that is one of the reasons why mammography is not recommended for women with dense breast and definitely most women under 45 have dense breast dense tissue and they are not recommended and unfortunately dense breast also happens to be high risk for cancer which means it's a dual problem right she is high risk and you need you need screening but then mammography cannot be used and in fact this is not a problem that geeta is saying because niramai has a solution for dense breasts it is something the world is calling out in us alone there has been a huge momentum in the last 2 to 3 years where many of these states 38 states have ruled uh, a ruling on mammography reporting saying that every mammography report should have the density overall density of the breast and if the density is c or d she needs another test and that is part of the report the lady needs to know whether she has a dense breast or not and there is a huge need for this new test and there are there's no standard new test today uh, to take care of the dense breast and people may say yes of course i have sono mammography the ultrasound breast ultrasound is a good one yes and it is being offered in many many diagnostic centers as a test for dense breast or younger women as well if there is an abnormality like a lump or some other uh, issue yes a uh, breast ultrasound can be used to actually figure out what whether there are hypoechoic uh, mass whether there is irregularity there and then say whether there is a possible abnormality and of course you can also do um, you know a usg uh, guided uh, biopsy to find the final conclusion however ultrasound is mostly a correlation modality when a mammogram finds a lump or a clinical breast examination finds a lump then you can go for a sonomammogram if it, there is no lump or as you know if it is completely asymptomatic the screening population trying to do an ultrasound takes a lot of time in both the breast and it also requires a lot of skill to find even small abnormalities when there is no symptom so this means there is a lot of subjectivity very very proficient uh, radiologists or sonographers who are able to find but uh, you know um, otherwise it gets unnoticed so if there is a way to say here could be a problem ultrasound is an excellent tool to say whether that problem is really benign or malignant of course finally you need a biopsy uh, you know to final con confirmatory diagnosis before uh, treating 
Of course, there are some efforts on automatic breast ultrasound where, you know, there are these machines which do this uh, compression and all that. And then, and that's like more than three and a half crores, only uh, one or two exists in India alone, these kinds of machines, right? Finally, then we come to mammograms and we talked a bit about the disadvantages uh, such as low sensitivity in younger women, like under 45 years of age, and also the pain, uh, you know, makes it um, a little bit uncomfortable for people to go for it. And also we talked about a potential risk for uh, radiation. All in all, in India, the for screening in large numbers, right? Clinical based examination, hand-based examination is generally the policy right now because of these reasons and also the affordability, accessibility reason. Clinical based examination is great, it's zero cost. Of course, the radiologist uh, or the gynecologist or a physician needs to know how to palpate it. It can also be done with self examination. However, hand can only find a 2.2 centimeter or two and a half centimeter of a lesion. Before that, it's very hard, very difficult to actually find it by hand, which means it is a TNM stage two or above, that is stage three or stage four. So that is another problem. And finally, also, as uh, Dr. Meenakshi Patel mentioned, just because there is a lump, it's not cancer. So that is where we are bringing to table a new test. Of course, there are other methods that people are aware about, PET CT, breast MRI, and all of that, but these are only diagnostic cells. These are not done for everybody who's walking around, right? So now that is where we bring a new test, which is uh, non-invasive, non-contact, radiation-free, affordable, accessible, and so on. And that will be the topic of today's uh, further discussion. So the three current screening tests or mammography, ultrasound, and clinical risk examination. And we bring from Niramai with all our partners, uh, a new test called Thermalytics, which is going to be the focus of today's test, uh, today's talk. First, let's see the advantages. Like I said, we will go outside in. We will talk about an overview of the technique from outside as an end user. Then we go into the clinical and the technical reason, technical details of it. So Nira, my solution, uh, which is Thermalytics, is basically a privacy-aware early-stage breast cancer detection solution or a test. First and foremost, if hand can detect two, two and a half centimeters, this test should detect before. Yes, it does. Our clinical validation says we are able to detect four millimeters and five millimeters of cancer, uh, which obviously is stage zero or stage one, right? And most importantly, our, the experience of taking the test is very, very easy. It is non-contact, non-invasive, no touch, no see, we say. There is a booth, the lady enters into the booth and the technician is also outside. Nobody touches the person, nobody sees the person. There is no radiation, there is no pain. We say four no's, no touch, no see, no pain, no radiation. So these four no's makes it very, very interesting and uh, you know likable for end users. And we've seen this, you know, we have done many camps where only four or five of them actually register for screening to start with because breast cancer screening, I may not have cancer. But as soon as one or two of them take it, they say it's so simple. You just go sit in front of the device like this and come out after 10 minutes, you're done. The test is done. Nobody, not even a technician is looking at you without clothes. Not even a technician is seeing. And that experience brings, you no, know, we have into the camp to 10 days, two days, you know, many hours, all of this happened because women really love our solution for the pure experience. Of course, it has to work. And yes, it does have good accuracy on women of all age groups under 45 or above 45. We have been unfortunate to detect a 17 year old who was cancerous with this test and a 92 year old walked into our camp and she was benign, a small lump, but and with the, the like, you know, bent back and, and still, you know, she really loved the test as well. And it is pretty, pretty affordable. The device itself is 1 15th the cost of a mammogram. And the, the screening also can be done by very simply skilled uh, you know, health workers or nursing staff, so which makes even your operational expenses very, very low. There is no uh, consumable or repeated uh, cost apart from the screening report itself that Nidamai generates. And it's a very portable screening, small screening device, which is just a one liter water ball this size. Uh, and it can uh, be, you know, established in a hospital or even put in a backpack and you can do external studies as well or screening camps as well. So this small is how the device itself looks. Uh, this is actually the device itself is just a thermal camera and we will talk more about this, but uh, this can be bought from off the shelf, but we actually buy in bulk and we're able to provide that for our uh, customers. And this is a very small thermal device. Thermal device you would have seen in airports and other places. It's completely harmless, just measures the temperature on the chest. 
and these device is this device is placed right on a tripod and simple skilled workers like health workers can be uh, trained to use this test and then uh, it is installed in 70 plus hospitals today such as apollo clinic hcg or health uh, you know or health spring and several other hospitals provide this solution and we'll talk uh, you know if there is any question we can do it uh, take it and when you go for uh, camps like this we create a small makeshift booth where the lady is actually right now getting screened and the technician or uh, uh, you know uh, an expert can be sitting outside and actually be doing the test here We've also, uh, you know, have a bus uh, which is funded by Rotary International. This is uh, uh, funded for Sakra World Hospital. It's a very big hospital in uh, Bangalore. They run these camps along with Rotary uh, uh, twice a week, you know, to uh, to the outskirts of Karnataka. This is called Pink Express. The only thing that is there in this is Niramai Solution. There's a small room where the Niramai Solution is uh, established, and there's a small, uh, you know, waiting room and uh, cervical screening, if required, you know, can be done. And uh, we've done more than 2,000 outreach camps. And also recently, because of COVID, people were not coming into the hospital. We started home screening, where our team actually goes to everybody's home. I mean, like whoever registers for screening on contact at, uh, you know, our niramai.com and, uh, you know, provides the home screening within 25 to 30 minutes, right? So it can be established, just set up in 10 minutes and the test is done in 20 minutes. So this is what is done. Now I'll play a 30 second video of the experience of this test itself and then go into the details. Tested the Niramai technology to me. Having heard about it, I went to get a checkup done. I was quite skeptical before I went for the test. It took me by surprise because uh, the machines didn't touch me. It was all happening from far away. Just the eye test, hote hai na? Dur se, bilkul yeah, it's a very, very simple test where the lady just sits like this in front of the device and then rotates. And that's about it. There is no other, um, you know, any other insertion, touch or anything that's happening. So that is the end user view. Um, Ma'am, shall I continue and we can take the Q&A at the end, right? So let's see how it works. Can I continue, Ma'am? Yes, yes. Uh, we still have time, no issues. So how does it work, the technical details? So the basic difference between a mammogram and the solution is the method of sensing the abnormality. Mammogram uses X-rays to sense the density differences and our solution uses thermal imaging or thermography to actually sense the abnormality in the body. Thermography has been around for a long, long time. Dr. Amprakas sir, who is chairing the session is a super expert in thermography. He's the first person who brought, who brought thermography to India. And this is a method which just measures the temperature variations on the chest by measuring the infrared rays which are already emitted. It's basically measuring the heat that's already emitted by our body. There is no rays that are put on the body. It's just measuring the temperature. Now with COVID, everybody is aware of infrared thermometer, right? You know, non-contact thermometer is exactly like that, but it's placed three feet. It's a high resolution. Instead of measuring one point, it measures four lakh temperature points per person. That is the difference. And that is the key to our solution. When there is an abnormality, there is higher metabolism and higher blood flow to the lesion. And so the temperature at the place and surrounding that place starts looking at, uh, looking little abnormal. And also we have two breasts. And so one, and most people get the breast cancer in one breast first, you know, by, uh, you know, um, it's usually, uh, you know, lymph invasions. Bilateral is very, very rare. So that's why you can actually see a huge symmetry difference between the left and the right side. You know, and that also gives an indication of how and uh, whether there is an abnormality. So a thermal image is something what you're seeing here, where every temperature point, every pixel, every color point here is a temperature. For example, a white color is 37 degrees Celsius, green or uh, red could be 36, uh, you know, yellow could be 35 degrees Celsius, some things like that. And it depends on different people have different things. And this has been used by thermographers who are trained experts like Dr. Rampaka sir. There, were, there are more than 500 of them around the world, more in, in US as well, who are using this for detecting uh, abnormalities in the body and then doing other confirmatory tests. As an adjunct modality, this is also approved as uh, you know, by USFDA. 
However, when, when you talk about manual thermography, there can be interpretation errors because everyone will not have a huge expertise such as Dr. Amprakas sir, or also, uh, you know, you may not have time to actually understand different types of, you know, uh, variations and so on and so forth. And it's also subjective, like, uh, you know, uh, other tests where there are lots of data involved because it's a huge cognitive overload. Think about looking at four lakh temperature points and this is a color point that you're seeing. What you're seeing is just a bunch of temperatures in color. And you cannot see a light yellow versus dark yellow and all of that. So you can't even see a line in which the yellow color is and so on. So, forth. so what a computer can very easily detect. So when a computer sees a, four, sees a four lakh temperature point and is able to mark the areas of high malignancies with boundaries and so on, we are able to actually characterize the temperature abnormality very, very confidently and objectively and quantitatively. And that is what is thermalytics. Thermalytics is uh, a normal solution. I don't know what happened here, sorry. Okay, this is how it's supposed to look, but anyway, yeah. So thermalytics is uh, a solution where it combines the thermography, which you heard last uh, slide, with artificial intelligence, which is a new field in computer science, which is being established in almost every domain today. Artificial intelligence or machine learning is almost like, um, you know, computer trying to model how our brain works. More and more, the experts look at different, different images, you know, the brain becomes more and more, um, you know, experienced and, and better, right? That is how a data-based and a decision-making algorithm like a machine intelligence-based algorithm will perform. And that is what we have used. We have combined thermal imaging and machine intelligence to provide this solution. So what you saw in the last time is exactly what it is last slide. So you use a thermal imaging device, generate this thermal uh, you know, image, right? After that is the software which actually crunches and analyzes this four lakh temperature points to say, where is the likely possibility of abnormality? What is the possibility of that being malignant? What are the scores? And using the scores, you can say whether somebody is likely to need a follow-up test or not. This is what is the crux of what we have built. And this is novel. You wouldn't have heard anywhere else except from Niramai because, or our partners because this is made in India and it is patented in US. There are 10 granted US patents, China patents, Singapore, India, all of them, you know, just to show that this is definitely unique in the world and we have received a lot of awards for it. Yeah. The key thing is that thermal imaging detects abnormality in tissue activity. There can be a lump which can be benign and that will not come as positive here. So we should not get confused that everything that is positive in mammography should be positive in this. Everything that is likely to be positive in mammogram and biopsy as well is has to be positive here and we will see how much we get. And again, just to reiterate, the core innovation is that uh, the uh, AI algorithm over thermal imaging, because thermal imaging has been around for some time and we don't want people to get confused that you know it's the old thermal thermography. It is not just thermography. Uh, you know, it is thermography with AI. And just to give an example, there are four people here, images of four women. The top one is normal. The next one is abnormal. And these two are very, very confusing. There are hot spots or high temperature points, but is it abnormal? Is it not? Here it's asymmetric also. Is it abnormal or not? That is what a machine learning tool like ours is able to confidently say by analyzing all mm -hmm. this here. We take the demography information family cancer history, age, uh, all of that. Um, asymmetry in patterns, I mentioned, we model the asymmetry in 30 different ways. And thermal distribution, how is the heat itself distributed? Focal increase in temperature versus, uh, you know, or, or the whole thing is white or is like a center point white and all that, that kind of thing. We have a novel algorithm, new technique for detecting blood vessel structure from thermal image. Now, when we do this blood vessel or ductal structures, we are able to detect deep tumors which are not showing a hot spot on the skin. And then we also do analysis of the boundary structure. Are there speculations in the boundary, just like a mammogram uh, is analyzed with the speculations. We look at thermal speculations. And also it's a uh, longer versus taller and so on, right? Those kinds of features are also uh, uh, looked at for this. And then we see whether the hotspot is fed with vascularity. So several, several features are used in order to come up with this uh, uh, scoring. And these are some of the patterns that have been granted. And machine learning, a bit about what is machine learning. Machine learning, as I said, is training a brain with known cases. Similar to that, 
in machine learning, we have training phase and a testing phase. In the training phase, we show a thermal image and say whether it's cancer or not. Show another thermal image, cancer or not. Thermal image, cancer. So this is the training set. How do we know whether it's cancer or not? We actually made every person go through thermal imaging. And the same person went through mammography, ultrasound, and biopsy, if she was positive, and trained this model with the biopsy result, not mammography result, not ultrasound result. We trained with the biopsy result. So with this, what happens, the machine is now confidently saying whether it's positive or negative because biopsy is the final confirmatory test. And once we have this classifier model built in the prediction phase, which is happening in the hospital, in the camp and so on, a new person comes in, the input is a thermal image. There's no need for the answer now, the label is predicted. This is a rough view of machine learning and that is the core of the solution that we have developed. We have trained the model with end-to-end -end solutions with, and, and more and more, uh, you know, if in case there is a, a mistake and you know, the person goes for an ultrasound and a biopsy and if that is negative, we can feed it back and make the model more and more better and better. Over four years, we have improved the performance from 70% to 90% plus and we're gonna share the results. And when I say machine learning, it's not just on the final classification or score generation. It is used in several parts of Niramai solution. For example, if a thermographer comes in and uh, you know takes an uh, you know image which is not good, it's not cooled well, or it's uh, you know taken in a wrong view, that our machine learning models can say no, you have taken left instead of right, you have not taken in front, so those errors will be marked. And there again, we use machine learning. When you take an image, you get the hole from the neck to the stomach. We actually mark the area of breast malignancy automatically using machine learning. Like that, several machine learning, more than 10 to 12 machine learning models are being used, not just one which says yes or no. And so this is computer-aided diagnostics using artificial intelligence machine learning on thermal images, which takes these images and information of the patient and generate a report. Let's get into the report part very quickly. But before that, what's the end-to-end -end, uh, uh, solution look like? The lady comes in. The thermographer who, has, who is trained, or a technician we call it, a technician who's trained by Niramai will provide the instructions of what has to be done and so on. There's a small cooling cycle, 10 minutes of cooling by a cooler or an AC is used. We are just shown fan here for ease of uh, uh, view. And then she sits like this and you saw in the video, she just turns on the stool and our algorithm actually analyzes and generates a report. This report goes to an app we have on the mobile called Niramai Doctor. And we have experts on the panel. Dr. Amprakash sir is one such expert and we have a couple of other experts who actually review the images on their mobile or on their PC and then certify and sign it. And only after that, it's given to the end user. Now we go into the clinical details. There are five thermal views that are taken for every patient. The frontal view, the left lateral, the left oblique, right lateral and right oblique. So in simple words, it's frontal, left 45, right 45, left 90, right 90. So basically we actually have markings on the ground for the person to say, keep one leg in front, keep one leg in the side. And so it actually becomes easy. And the technician also can see the profile of the person, how she's sitting. And so she also gives instructions for uh, taking the right view. I now have three subjects which show malignant, benign and normal cases. And then we go into more details of these kind of subjects. So here is a subject she is subject number 48, anonymized. It's in a very, very reputed hospital where she went through Niramai test and it said malignant. And she also went through mammography ultrasound that also was malignant for details are here. Ill-defined irregular mass was found in the central and upper right quadrant of the right breast. That's exactly where we have marked the tool. Niramai tool actually automatically marks the blue areas which we have seen here. It is marking the upper outer quadrant, uh, you know, uh, uh, central and upper quadrants here with uh, malignancy. And this is a clear BIRAD 5 category, highly suggestive of malignancy. And finally, it was also confirmed with a uh, histopathology test. Yes, so this is a case where you'll see the uh, vascularity structures as well as the hotspot structures, which are marked automatically by the tool. And the uh, final guidance was malignant. This is a case where, you know, it's very confusing. You look at the thermal image, there's a lot of red and yellow. You may think, wow, there may be some problem here because she has some red. No, 
because when you take an image, 60% of the people will have some orange or red. Just because there is an orange and red, she is not cancerous. That is also the reason why thermography alone is not used. With AI, this can be avoided. So here, what we have done, we have done a lot of analysis of these uh, mentioned, which I mentioned before, and we have said it is benign, right? It is not a malignant region. It is thermally active, but it is benign. And you mark, you see the marking in green here instead of blue. That shows the benign. There is vascularity, but still we say benign. And you see, mammography and ultrasound also said it's a benign lesion where just a cystic, like, you know, multiple cysts are there in both breasts. You see some activity in both and it's a Byrads 2 category. And we also said it is, we call it T-Byrads. We use a thyroid thermal Byrad, which is also T-Byrad 2. And what's also interesting is the cysts were found in two o'clock position. And that's why we have actually marked the green as well. So there may be some correlation in the system, but actually she does not require any follow-up. And a purely normal with no major activity would look, look like this. There's no red or yellow or whatever, and very few, uh, you know, um, you know, vascular activity. We said it's normal, and she was a bired one category. Just a reminder, right? Bired one and two are normal and benign, respectively, and four and five are malignant, and three is like likely benign, and so she's usually asked for a follow up in six months. So it's the same you know, uh, criteria we use in uh, NIRMA as well when we generate a report. We call it T-BIRAD, which is thermal BIRAD rather than just BIRAD. So we will now go into four uh, further examples. Okay, so first I'll just show the uh, report. So the report has three pages. Just to make it simpler, we put everything in one uh, slide. So there is the first one where we take the patient details, like, you know, postmenopausal, age of menopause, you know, uh, you know, when was the last menstrual cycle, family cancer history, personal cancer history, all of that is taken. And then the right side is what is generated. We generate quantity scores called thermobiological score, areolar score, vascular score. These scores were, signify abnormality if they're above 0.5. This is a zero to one. Any number above 0.5 start looking abnormal. If thermobiological score actually gives a thermal asymmetry based uh, analysis, hotspot based analysis, Aerolar score is an analysis uh, around the nipple area because uh, you know there are thick skins. You know the temperature there is much lower, and so that sort of uh, is is the reason why we give a separate score. It could be a ductal issue, and so the areolar score may be high if there is a ductal issue. And then vascular score is based on vascularity analysis or ductal structure analysis, and uh, high vascularity always mean malignancy, but we are calling it out so that you know the doctor can make a call. Sometimes. There is an, a lump and then vascularity being high, she definitely needs a follow-up or a family cancer history being high and so on and so forth. So this, this vascular score has to be taken with a pinch of salt. I mean, we have to look at other conditions like a Barrett 3 condition, but other two being greater than 5, definitely she needs a follow-up test. And also we have generated these images in the report automatically. We mark uh, something that is suspicious of malignancy in blue, which is not in green. And uh, this are again um, are marked automatically. And this is a case. In addition, we generate a final impression ex suggesting whether it's a T-bar at one, two, three, four, five, and also suggest uh, a follow-up also. But that is left to the doctor. The doctor can modify those uh, final impression basis, several other clinical uh, findings, and then change the final impression. The T-Barrett score is shown only to the doctor, not to the end user, because the doctor makes the final decision. But we give all the guidance uh, for that. And in real-time reporting, let's like say when we go for camps and so on, they cannot wait for the doctor to review and give the report, and they will not have a printer to print three pages. So there, we do a red, yellow, green, a traffic light output, Immediately, within 15 minutes, the test is done, the report is generated, and the lady knows whether she has to stay back for another test or she can go back home. This red, yellow, green is automatically generated by a health worker. And of course, here we are slightly more towards, you know, uh, the like, you know, if a person is sounding little uh, abnormal, we just ask her to go for a second test. We make her wait for one hour and then do the test once again to be so sure. And then Either in this case or the previous case, if a person is found to be malignant, we do not send her for treatment or biopsy directly. If this is a screening test, if she is found to be positive by thermolytics, she needs to go for an ultrasound as a correlation. After that, a biopsy if needed and then a treatment. So this is a screening test at this stage. 
So there's a few more examples of these T-barreds. So here is a case where it's a asymmetry, a lot of blue areas which have, we have marked, which is T-barreds 5 is generated by our tool with a thermoviscous score of 0.9 and so on. And all of these scores are high. She's definitely barred 5. And yes, she was found to be a barred 5 category, even with ultrasound and, uh, uh, and MAMO. This is subject 138344, it's an anonymized number. Here is another case, which is barred T-barred 1, which is automatically generated by our tool. Ascularity is 0.1, that's fine. 0.1 thermobiological score, that's fine. And yes, it was also by that category one with, um, uh, with mammography. Here is a case of a lot of uh, neoplastic kind of, uh, you know, high, high thermal activity. Again, we say the barrett 5, and we also saw axillary uh, lymph node being uh, attacked. And recently we've also enhanced our solution to analyze axilla. And this has been accepted even in the Global Breast Cancer Conference recently. But yeah, so this is actually also saying accelerating for the enlargement. And then this is T-barrets 2, right? Where there's a benign condition like the example I showed before. And it turned out to be, again, cystic here, barret 2 as well. Another case of T-barret 4, where there is uh, also, uh, you know, uh, which is a lump and vascularity together. And that again, though there is, this ensemble score actually is an additional score which looks at all the conditions and generates some number, like uh, whether there is a, uh, you know, like a symptom, if a person already mentioned lump, everything is taken care of. And there again, we have found that she's positive here. And I think this person is about 65 years of age where the cutoff is 0.35 instead of 0.5. And it was also finally put as 0.4C. You see, it is 0.4C and this is 0.4, like it's not greater than 0.5. Still, because her, her age is above 65, if even if 0.4, we actually call her as a Byred 4 category. And so she was finally, um, you know, also detected and uh, confirmed a malignancy. And this is another case. And I can go on and on about multiple such cases because so far we have done 34,000 screenings and women who have gone through some of you may think, how does the mammogram image look for these people, right? Why did mammogram, you know, what is the advantage of it? So here are some three examples of how a mammogram mass looks versus how a thermal image looks for the same person. So here is a malignant person, TB score or thermobiological score as 0.55 and ensemble score 0.83, which is, as you know, like T-bar at five, right? We have seen good enough examples. And we have also done a marking in the left breast that there are this. But when you look at this MAMO, it's a, a like, you know, uh, a category C. We talked about A, B, C, it's a category C, I guess. I mean, it is, uh, some people may say D also, but essentially where is the problem? It's very hard to find here, but here very easily we've actually marked it. And this is where you have to do an ultrasound. Even if a uh, mammogram here, it was a uh, barred zero. No, con I mean, no inconclusive. Here's another case. It's highly dense. Mammogram is completely dense and we don't know whether it's a problem or not. And we analyze and we say, no, there's no problem. Though everywhere it is dense, it's no problem, right? She is a benign and it's a green. So this is also confirmed benign. Here is a case, it's completely again dense. And is there a problem or not? It looks very similar to this in terms of the mammography, but here it's very clearly in thermal imaging, there is a huge blob here, which cannot be ignored. And the score is 94.94. So that is the way our solution works, right? It can be used wherever there is a huge, uh, you know, an, uh, inconclusiveness in the mammogram or wherever there is no mammogram at all. You can definitely use this instead of a mammogram. If you already have a mammogram, fine, you can use that. In addition, wherever there is a doubt, you can use this. Wherever there is a person less than 45, you can use this. But if you don't have a mammogram, which many, many diagnostic centers don't have, you know, this is being used. Now I just go a little bit uh, into the clinical validation. I will take uh, 10 more minutes. Uh, we have 12 o'clock, so we have time. So uh, a clinical validation, uh, you know, um, I just, uh, yeah. Clinical validation or a clinical study, uh, you know, is requires a very systematic way of computing the accuracy of a system. I gave examples of how it's working, but then the way you should do it, and as many of you know, one is you can do a retrospective analysis or a prospective analysis. Prospective analysis requires every person to come in. She takes a thermal imaging or an RMI test followed by mammography, ultrasound, and biopsy. 
Mammographers won't know the answers of neuromitis. Neuromitis people will not know the answers of them. It's completely blinded and somebody else, third party, come, you know, compares the result like an exam. And that's how crucial the clinical validation should be. And that's how uh, our test has been evaluated with consent taken and so on and so forth. So the first, I'll just share two results and uh, there are like seven or eight uh, publications and we'll be happy to share, uh, you know, some of them for people who are interested in reading this. First thing is to see whether it is better than thermogram. Because if you Google on thermography, you will see a lot of mixed uh, you know, reactions. People will say it's good. Some people will say it's very bad because it's not accurate, all of that. Because it's a subjective analysis, different people have published different results. There are also been false clinical trials that are done. So we said, how can we compare ourselves with thermography, M like manual visual inspection of thermography, right? So here we, we have 303 patients who went through thermal imaging and uh, you know, an experienced doctor actually reviewed this. And after finding some thermal abnormality was there, the person also did an ultrasound after that. And the same images were used by Niramai Thermolytics to see automatic Barrett scoring or an S or no scoring. So here, because it was a diagnostic center where we did this analysis, 29 malignancies out of 303 were found. It's about 10% malignant because people were anyway walking in. So there is a little bit of a bias on people being little abnormal. So here uh, the, you will see that in this particular study, the sensitivity, because the, the, the interpretation was done by a very good expert, you know, the, the sensitivity was very good, 96.5% in both the cases. However, specificity was 20% better in thermolytics. Specificity is the uh, number of false positives being reduced. Higher is the specificity, lower is the false positive, right? So you'll see a 20% difference in the false positive, reduced false positives when you use a machine. So a 96, 99 is an excellent test. Anyone would say, even a doctor is, you know, uh, cannot be 100, 100, right? Everywhere there is a limitation. You always have another test to finally confirm. This was, of course, published in Japan, uh, you know, in VASIT conference. We've actually had six more trials, you know, six plus trials where we compare mammography with uh, Niramai test. And one of them, uh, which I want to uh, stress here is, uh, it's actually a poster, and then we have a full journal paper as well. The post on 769 subjects, which was accepted in ASCO Breakthrough Summit, American Society of Clinical Oncology Breakthrough Summit, which was held in Bangkok last year, 2019, sorry. As I said, 34,000 women have gone through this test. And the overall, overall, all the publications say that we have better sensitivity than mammography in all of these tests, you know, equal or better. And then uh, positive predictive value of uh, over mammograph, uh, manual thermography, that is the number of false positives is much, much lower. And what's interesting is so far, we have found all the cancers wherever there is no, uh, you know, symptom. Of course, we have found all cancers in most cases, but when there is a symptom, it becomes a diagnostic case. We are still not claiming a diagnostic modality. We are a screening modality, but there's no symptom. If there is a symptom, you should definitely do our test, but maybe first time you can do another test. That for repeat screening of symptomatic people, you can do this test alone. And uh, so the sensitivity is 100%. We have not missed any case in an asymptomatic population, the screening population, with 93% specificity, that is very, very low false positive rate of 7% false positive rate. And you, you may say, how does it compare with mammography? So here is the same result compared with mammography. 769 patients, you see the orange bar, wherever you were 100%, uh, mammography actually missed many, many cancers. It was 67%. And the specificity was actually almost equal, right? Maybe slightly higher in our case, right? Uh, maybe something like 92% and this, yeah, slightly higher, 80 and 85, 80.5. But what is also, uh, you know, astonishing is that mammography could only take 400 out of 769 patients because the other 250 patients were a younger group or dense or whatever. The radiologist did not recommend uh, uh, you know, mammogram, she, they directly went to ultrasound. So this comparison is again with biopsy results or mammo plus ultrasound, uh, you know, validated result. And this uh, was conducted in three hospitals, uh, HCG, Narana Hridayalaya, and another diagnostic center. So all of this, uh, you know, together formed uh, the data set here. This, again, a subset of this was published uh, in a top tier journal called 
Journal of Clinical Oncology, and this is available for download. This is only on 470 patients because we are doing another paper, uh, you know, which has been submitted to um, another uh, top tier journal, and you cannot have overlap of uh, uh, data. So this has 470 patients, and you will see a similar 100% uh, sensitivity, a similar result even in this. And this is uh, one of the top tier journals, um, the top tier papers that uh, you know we'll be happy to share with each one of you to see. There are several such papers we have published. You know, the latest one, which I mentioned, is the Global Breast Cancer Conference, where we look at axillary lymph node metastasis, as well as San Antonio Breast Cancer Conference. You will see a hat trick 2020, 2019, and 20, uh, you know, 2018 uh, as well. So we have a continuous three posters in San Antonio Breast Cancer Conference, which is one of the, uh, the largest breast cancer conferences where I had an opportunity to meet uh, the one who invented chemotherapy and such 7,500 oncologists who come there. We also have AI conference publications because our artificial intelligence, computer science algorithms are also very novel. We have 10 plus publications there. And I would like to play a small video where Dr. Kiran Madhamdra Shah, ma'am, who is also my mentor, uh, talks. But today we have a new solution which is being provided by a very exciting young startup called Nirmai, who actually have come up with a thermo profiling technology, which actually creates a heat map of uh, tissue and thereby detects the smallest of uh, lesions in breast cancer. And this, I think, is a very exciting time because these are non-intrusive and painless kind of interventions for breast screening. And I encourage every young girl over the age of 25 to start doing annual checkups using these kind of technologies. I think Niramai has a huge potential because I think breast screening and annual breast checkups are going to be very important going forward. But today, so yes, uh, our advisors and partners, we have, of course, Dr. Amprakash, sir, who is our mentor, a guru as well for this. Uh, we thought him, we couldn't have done this at all. Dr. Kiran Ma'am and also international uh, experts and Dr. Sudhakar, sir, from HCG, and also from, uh, you know, um, marketing perspective from Philips and GE as well. We do have clearances from government bodies uh, in India, definitely DCGI is a uh, CDSU organization. And, uh, you know, this is NHM Maharashtra. Uh, this is uh, Bangalore, uh, which is uh, in Canada, but this is from BBMP. The, uh, we, we actually have permission to do it in every government hospital in Bangalore. And uh, we had adopted about 28 of them to do this test. Uh, because of COVID, we have uh, stopped those because those have been converted into COVID uh, screening and now vaccination. And after that, we will resume there. But yes, it is still happening in Maharashtra government hospitals in addition to 75 other hospitals in Apollo clinics, I mentioned it, CG and several. In 15 cities, we have our established uh, centers uh, today. Um, and then um, in international use perspective, we are ISO 13485 cleared. CE mark uh, audit is completed from the German notified body. We expect the certificate to come anytime now, like next week. And then MDSAP for many other countries, uh, you know, we are internationally cleared uh, as well. So overall, the regulatory clearances are multiple here. Uh, in addition to the clearances I mentioned, uh, you know, the camera that we use, the thermal imaging device we used is also certified by USFDA to be safe, CE, and as well as most of the reports that we do in the hospital will go through experts such as Dr. Amprakar sir to review before actually it goes to your uh, you know, um, uh, patient. So that way, it's a very, very safe test. It can be provided to women today. And again, uh, just to make sure that all of you know what this feeling of uh, the, doing the test is, you know, our team has announced uh, a free home screening. That is because it can be done at home. This test can be done at home. Uh, home screening to all of the attendees here, assuming they are all ladies, and uh, so that you can see how the test works at your home or at your clinic, you know. And of course, uh, this is limited time offer. So I will uh, work with Dr. Palavi, ma'am, uh, to, to to try and provide you those coupons, which you can just our team will come to your home or off or um, uh, uh, clinic and then do the test for you, and you can see how you can offer the same to your uh, customers. 
and there are also medical uh, sort of institutions who have endorsed this like karnataka clinical uh, you know karnataka cancer society sorry we are in bangalore so for the last 3 years we have been working with karnataka cancer society to do all of their rural camps right they do it actually we have the solution provided to them and they actually do only breast cancer screening with minimum test uh, since last 3 years same thing i mentioned about uh, bangalore uh, hospitals jjmc many medical colleges dr balu sir is a huge patron for us as well and then testimonials from corporate camps as well as women who have taken this test you know uh, it's amazing experience and so on and so forth is what they say and our uh, ecosystem has been very kind we have received a lot of awards in fact i had an opportunity to meet dr uh, sorry um, uh, yeah bill gates uh, who is the founder of, of uh, no he doesn't need a introduction i met him and i was able to shake hands with him before corona uh, you know because of these kinds of innovation finally uh, you know from ai and artificial intelligence and computer science perspective uh, you know this is a world map of uh, ai startups and if you see that india is blue because of nirmai india is the only indian startup which is listed on the top 100 ai startups in the world with this uh, you know i really uh, call out for collaboration with each one of you please help us save many many lives you know using artificial intelligence and thermal imaging we can actually detect early stage breast cancer in a non invasive uh, you know non contact uh, in a privacy aware manner and also making it so accurate to everybody and finally definitely in an affordable and accessible manner so that more women can come and and get benefited through uh, through you all you know with this uh, call i i really uh, open up for q and a uh, and request uh, dr ram prakash sir to uh, make uh, his comments as well as uh, you know dr pallavi ma'am uh, to to guide us in any other uh, manner thank you dr geeta it was a wonderful experience karel many things about geeta i did not know till i heard it from pallavi because she has not told me many things <laughs> okay now as far as thermal imaging is concerned this is a screening tool and uh, all of you will remember that uh, breast cancer is on the rise today and we are seeing it in younger and younger patients and if we've got to identify these younger patients at the right point of time we have no other examination that can give us this information other than thermal imaging and uh, between my own interpretation and thermolytics there has been a world of a difference because it has been able to identify or eliminate the false positives that we had given uh, as positives so that is the one advantage we have had with uh, this coming in and second important thing is this can be taken up in a mass scale where hundreds and thousands of patients can be taken up on a mass scale which you cannot do with mammography at all see for mammography you require a trained technician a proper uh, image to be obtained if the image is improper you have got to repeat it so all these procedures get eliminated when we go into thermal imaging so this i think is what the world is going to see in future and comparing it with pet scan as far as breast is concerned it is as good or probably a shade better than pet scan as far as the breast is concerned now you might ask me the next question why do you say that because deeper structures are not very well depicted on surface thermal images so that is the only drawback we have with uh, uh, thermal imaging as compared to pet because pet can be used for almost all uh, metastatic diseases whereas this is exclusively useful for breast for the simple reason that breast is a part of the skin it's a part of the skin and any changes in the skin that occur can be very well identified the next point that i would like to state is that it takes about 10 years for a cancer to be palpable and uh, thermal imaging picks it up at the third year itself second or the third year of development of cancer itself whereas uh, mammography picks it up at the 6th year and it is at the 10th year that you feel the lump in the breast so this is the time gap that is there just imagine if you were to pick up the disease 6 years in advance that means you are only doing a lumpectomy a simple lumpectomy is what will be required right nothing else will be required and that will be a 100% cure you will not require chemotherapy you will not require radiation therapy nothing will be required so that is the advantage we have with thermal imaging today and i think in the near future it's going to become one of the most important tools which is going to be used not only in breast cancer in quite a number of other diseases also it is useful in sports medicine it's useful in diabetics so these are other areas which need to be incorporated into thermal uh, processes 
Okay, so that we are ready to take any questions that you might want to ask any of the participants. Thank you, Geeta, once again. It was a thank wonderful you, presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, absolutely a very wonderful session. The concept itself with the highest uh, specificity and sensitivity with the ease of use and also the portability. I think Correct. that would score over and put it, uh, 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 it will go in a very long term um, uh, scenario, right? Yes. So yes. Um, I think the audiences must have gathered well the concept. It's absolutely not difficult at all. Uh, I would like to have few questions. Now, when a patient is posted for mammography, like for a general screening, normally what the general gynecologist or the surgeons or the oncosurgeons, we put a history that uh, it is always preferable that you do it post menstrually because right. pre-menstrually the patient has a lot of congestion in the breast due to the hormonal changes because of the water retention due to progesterone. So are we having any prerequisite, any relation to the menstruation? Yeah. If I want to answer that. Yes. So um, generally what we do is uh, for the analysis itself, we take the last menstrual uh, period, LMP as the yeah. inputs itself. Yeah. So we look at the, um, the scan date and the LMP and try to utilize, uh, you know, uh, compute what phase of uh, the menstrual cycle the person is uh, before doing this. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is only true for camps. But when you're giving appointments, we generally say like uh, five days uh, after, uh, during the menstrual menstrual we yeah, try to avoid probably, yeah 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 but in a camp setting it is fine in fact we are doing a trial ma'am a separate study where we are trying to we have actually made about 10 uh, women go through uh, niramai test uh, continuously for six weeks every week right so the cycle is coming so we are going to come up with a guidance and doing the adjustment uh, yeah so the uh, more fine tunings on the on your the menstruation, line, but it's a very good your, point, actually. Your so binary that is, line of zero and one. <laughs> yeah, that's yes, fine. Yes. Uh, yeah. Second thing is, uh, now since this is temperature uh, interpretation of uh, the thermal spots, the hot nodules and the cold nodules. So I think uh, the patient has to be afebrile. Sorry? The patient has to be afebrile? Correct, correct, no, correct. Yeah. Correct, yeah. correct. Yeah. correct. So, correct. Somewhere between 35 to 37, that's the normal body temperature would be the ideal candidates, right? This is like just general information I'm trying to, so that we know clinically because then what, what are the patient selection? So the patient selection criteria and the instruction, landing instructions to the patients to refer for the test uh, should be, you know, uh, complete. And yeah. then third question, yeah, third question yeah, is- I think, uh, sir, does it, uh, you can correct me. Even yeah. patients with fibroids can come in uh, for the test. Yeah. There is yeah. asymmetry. And, uh, yeah. you know, of course, we have not done a complete trial. No, no, no. no. My, my, uh, question Dr. About my, my question was, supposingly, uh, I mean, uh, you do take the temperature records. So, but if the patient is having fever, 101 fever. Okay. degrees. Okay. okay. Sure. So sure. then that, that day the patient is up, right? Yeah, so, that is true. But still, asymmetry will show up. But generally, yes, a person with it's fever. better not to. Yeah, it's better, better not, not to do on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And any um, like supposingly, I'm talking about not obese. Most of the Indian ladies, 45 plus, 10 because of those hormonal changes and perimenopausal, they start putting on weight and everything. But what about a very very heavy breast? Not a problem. I mean, those not a really, problem. Uh, yeah, really, no, really, no yeah. Not a problem, not, right? Not a problem at all. Yeah. Okay. Any size, any size of the breast is not a problem because the entire breast is a skin appendage. Yeah. So it makes no difference whatsoever as okay. far as thermal imaging is concerned. So yeah. the penetration is not at all affected. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. The, and and just color. to add to sir, uh, you know, we make the person sit like this, right? So yeah. sometimes what happens, the inframemory fold, you know, does not get captured. So we make the person sit and straighten up. So yeah. even we try to so just get, extend. Yeah. So just extend it. it. So that is needed. Yeah. Apart so from that, uh, you know, otherwise the sagging a uh, little bit, we lose the under thing. Yeah. So uh, like sir said, because it's on the skin, um, you know, we actually also do vascular analysis. The, when you do the vascular analysis, even if the, the lesion is very deep and she has very big breasts, right? The 
blood vessel structures are under the skin only so those will you will see it feeding into it so you will see an asymmetry in the uh, but the exact location it will be difficult to find then uh, that's why ultrasound is uh, okay. any 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 absolute contraindication there is no absolute contraindication <laughs> that's a very clinical yeah there's, there's then, an ab absolute indication let me tell you about the absolute indication now today we know definitely that uh, there's a family history of malignancy yeah right uh, tends to go on in families so we should start a thermal imaging at age 25 when we do a thermal imaging at age 25 we categorize them into certain categories now not everybody has the same sort of a breast response to the menstrual cycle i'm sure all of you are aware of that yeah now, why is this difference between one lady and another lady it is mainly dependent on the hormone receptors or the quantum of hormone receptors that are there in the breast so it is important for us to identify such as those who have a larger quantum of um, breast receptors in the breast because if a cancer develops in them the progression of cancer will be very very rapid as when compared to one who has less number of hormone receptors that is the variation that you get in the progression of the disease so in that context starting at an early age for uh, families that have a breast uh, uh, you know malignancy history is very very ideal and important so this one area where i think thermal imaging plays a very very extraordinary contribution second yeah second could be like i mean you know just just a practical if we try to uh, segregate the patients or from the history where there is unopposed estrogen like in all the nulligravid patients right there is Correct. no break to that unopposed estrogen because they had never been pregnant yes. so th those could be the candidates yes. whom uh, it can be started at a bit earlier age correct right yeah absolutely um yeah so like we said uh, sometimes pregnant women who are lactating also show up with vascularity and high thermal signature mm -hmm. but uh, it is not harmful at all you can still conduct uh, this test for pregnant ladies of course the chances of uh, you know malignancy in pregnant ladies is only 1 in 1000 still we have found uh, with a very very top uh, Uh, OBG clinic chain, right? We work with them uh, to actually do just 150 pregnant people. And I know many of you are gynecs here, and I would like to share one more uh, related uh, point here: is that the abnormality or malignancy in pregnant lady, asking a pregnant lady to say check for cancer, is like very disturbing for her. However, what we have found is when we do the analysis and thermal imaging of pregnant ladies. we are able to give additional guidance not just cancer of course if there's an abnormality we may be able to find we do not give a score we we are uh, you know work with the gynecs to give the right uh, you know uh, guideline to her but we are able to uh, determine the lactation capability of the person so for example uh, we have done a person for a, a screening thermal screening in every trimester and you will see that there is an increased vascularity the vascular score increases right over trimester and secondly as you, you know i don't have to at all tell you but there is a, a difference in lactation capability between the left side and the right side and whether it's left or right is producing more milk depends on the person mostly i think it will be left but it depends on the person which breast to use for feeding more to the baby and this the lactation guidance can be given by just taking a snapshot on these scores that are generated by uh, by niramai this is what uh, we call as a, a mother care product just for new uh, mothers and uh, also maybe like every trimester you can see because if there is a some part which is not like you know blocked or something we can actually notice it over the trimesters also um the only thing is we have not done a full fledged trial on this about 150 uh, pregnant women we have screened and we have seen this difference we have done a oral confirmation saying okay uh, after the baby was born did you actually use more uh, did you get more milk in the left because the you know the analysis is showing and all of those cases have matched actually so yes, uh, this is a gynec community i'm very excited uh, retrograde yeah part, be part of this uh, you know multi site trial on uh, just pregnant women for providing lactation guidance nothing to do with cancer just breast health right that is also a completely new um, segment and new product that uh, all of us companies can actually create for uh, women thank you madam <laughs> thank you for elaborating it very nicely uh, can i say something please yes ma'am yeah. yes sir you please. know when we started with ultrasound 
we did not realize that uh, gynecologists and ultra, uh, obstetricians would get ultrasound machines into their clinics <laughs> because in india in india females generally go to a gynecologist for their breast problems they don't come to a surgeon or they don't go to a physician very rarely they go to physicians and surgeons they generally come to obstetricians first yes yeah, sometimes sir when you identify or if their mammography report is positive for malignancy it becomes really very difficult they will say that you operate i said see it's not my it's not right. in my purview you should see a onco surgeon i mean you know it becomes so because uh, of femininity they try to identify yeah. it yeah. with yes. the gynecologist no. so i think most no, of no, the what, what the i'm trying to say is what i'm trying to say is Yes, that sir. all of you have come into ultrasound now yes. all of you must come into thermolytics also yes, yes automatically yes. apart from apart from examining the uh, genital organs this is also part of that so this yeah. also could become a very important uh, add on because the cost of the machine is equal to or smaller than the cost of a good ultrasound machine today yes and like yes. a mammography machine which is yeah. today 1 crore rupees yeah yeah So, yeah. yeah no actually I, very so, good point that uh, dr amprakash sir brought in i think and uh, just i would like to interject uh, you know what are the options available for the gynex if it's okay sir if i can say yeah please yes. go ahead please go ahead so um, um see today all of you are gynecologists and you want to let's say provide thermolytic solution and we have kamal and surajit from our business team but i'll just share uh, two models which are available which may be useful for you the first model is like sir said you know it's not a very expensive equipment you can provide this like just like you are providing your ultrasound for the end user you can provide this and your ultrasound also is going to be faster if you do this thermal imaging because you know we have the location identified i didn't stress too much about it the location is identified just like a mammo would have identified location in the sense that in the image you know which quadrant which clock position it is and that is where you can focus your ultrasound on so that is point number 1 let's say you don't have too many patients walking in it's a small clinic you mostly spend time in the hospital where you have uh, you know big machine and you are buying a thermolytics there then our team actually has a direct to doctor model where you can just say i will provide nirmay thermolytics test only once a week let's say every monday whoever you know wants to get a breast screening come only on monday so then also without buying the machine our team will come in and provide that uh, test for you on a day on a weekly basis and then that will be much uh, more economical for you and you will be providing for your uh, you know patients also it depends on how much crowd you have in the clinic right so this is that you could uh, also uh, take and also you can do uh, like camps on uh, some of these days um, you know maybe every friday you can't say women's day i feel women's day has to be celebrated every day but anyway so this is uh, this is a uh, uh, you know just a small bit of information more information is provided uh, by uh, you know kamal and surajit who are here yeah fine ram sir can we have the closing remarks from your end yes uh, you know after going through all this you know i started um, uh, mammography in bangalore in karnataka i should say i was the first to start mammography i was the first to start ultrasound in karnataka right i was the first to start endovaginal mm-hmm. ultrasound many for the first i have yeah. to be the first to start uh, the thermal imaging in india but i would love to see more and more people getting involved in uh, thermal imaging because that is the future of breast uh, diseases not yeah. only breast cancer for all breast diseases just uh, just now uh, geeta was uh, narrating about uh, lactation that's yeah. another area where i'm sure you will be very interested in so yeah. these are some of the areas where we can provide a quality output at a very low cost so that is the advantage we have with thermolytics today so i i'm sure all of you would definitely open up your minds to conceive yes. the idea of thinking about this on a regular basis yeah thank you thank you very much thank, thank you. you thank you very much uh, i would like to thank from the bottom of the heart to dr geeta manjuna dr ram prakash sir sparing a uh, very valuable time on weekend on sunday but uh, we selected this date because uh, uh, tomorrow we are celebrating international women's day so i thought this was a very good occasion to launch the concept in badoda and gujarat so okay. i would also like to thank kamal uh, who had helped me outright in coordinating the entire thing and i think kamal few of the doctors or uh, i think uh, will keep bothering you now and then 
yes for more uh, technical inquiries or whatever so i will be sharing your number uh, further uh, so sure. i would also like to thank dr minakshi patel for giving her presence and blessings to the program and cme and uh, i would also like to thank all the participants today uh, kamal i think you can just take the list or in case if i have some queries and uh, if anyone wants to have a home screening out of the participants today so i will provide you with the list and then you can coordinate in one go then for everybody Sure. Is it fine? Thank yeah. you very much from Thank you. again bottom of my heart, uh, Dr. Palimi ma'am and Dr. Minakshi ma'am. I think it was an excellent session. Thanks for bringing all the gynecologists together. I know yesterday I was there and she she was in another seminar. Like you know, it's an amazing seminar. That's okay. <laughs> yes. And yes. Uh, really look forward to partnering with you in multiple such uh, uh, you know endeavors. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Th